Hi everybody, Renegade68 here with some more Let's Play Ever 17 Z Out of Infinity Prime. So, things are really starting to come together now. There's been some twists and it's it's been interesting piecing things together. It's all making good sense and I like that. And there's clearly been a lot of build up to this. And um I honestly I was so caught up with the time travel thing. The idea that it actually is just two events separated by 17 years and that Tsukumi, the crazy conspiracy theorist, was right, kind of really threw me off. Um, although before I start this, I have a bit of a theory. Um, it's kind of a continuation of a theory I already made, but now I've had time to think about it and uh, thought about like the full thing. So right now, Shonen brought up how, oh, this Takeshi's a fake Takeshi, the real Takeshi died, probably. Um, I'm gonna assume that they're gonna think that, but they're gonna end up finding out eventually that this isn't the fake Takeshi, it's the real Takeshi who survived because of the cure virus. And the reason he's doing all this, the reason he put all, because he, he had to set it up no matter what, whether he's fake or real, it had to be him pretty much at this point. Because he did, he did tell me it was 2017, early in the LP, on Shonen's side. I, um, I'm 100% sure about that now. So he definitely, there's no way that could have been, there's no way that could have been, uh, What's the word? He had to be playing dumb for that. Like, there's no way he could have mistaken the year, I'm pretty sure. Um, so I think he set this up in order to save Coco, because he got a really close bond with Coco, and then she didn't get out or something? It seemed like she got out. They made it They made it seem like she got out. Maybe her consciousness was stuck there or something, and somehow Takeshi decided to set this up to... Save Coco? I guess? That's my theory at the moment. Um, I guess we'll just find out. And then there's the question of where the other Shonen fits in, but I don't know. We'll just find out. We'll just keep going and we'll find out. So. It's alright. Mama. Mama. You don't need to apologize, well, for leaving us. You need to apologize for being a bitch, maybe, a little bit. It's enough just to be with you. I don't know, is that really enough? As we held onto each other, we understood everything. Not everything. My and I accepted everything, understood, and forgave. Really? I still don't understand. I don't understand the story of the mother. Like, maybe my memory is being vague, but how did they come to leave their mother? I don't remember. Reasons weren't important. I think reasons are a little bit important. Uh, that always pisses me off when characters are like, oh, the reason isn't important, and then you don't find out the reason. You know, I'll be okay with them saying the reason isn't for important if we find out the reason. If we don't find out a reason, and then a character's like, oh, but the reason isn't important, that's gonna piss me off. But anyway. At that moment, a quiet peace filled us. It was enough. We didn't require anything else. Okay, for right now, sure, but later on, please. I relaxed and I leaned against my mother. She was warm. I closed my eyes and was intoxicated by her warmth. Mother. Mother. A cozy slumber. A soft breeze under the May sunshine. Peace. It was like floating on the calm ocean. Swaying comfortably. Cuddled up together. Before I knew it, I had stopped crying. All I could hear was just our calm breathing and my mother's heartbeat. Thump, 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 thump. I was alive. Or maybe I'd just been born. Thump, 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 thump. Everything was affirmed and accepted and forgiven. There was no me, nor Mayo, nor Sugumi. There was only one life connected together. Just one single soul. That's uh, creepy. In the year 2017, May 7th, 11 a.m., the men from the lie bitch were waiting for Sugumi when she got to the floating island. I see, this is after, um... Yes, this is after Takeshi just sacrificed himself. Sugumi, a carrier of the cure virus. To them, she was a valuable sample. Their eyes glaring and mouths half open, she could see their dark, wet tongues. Ew. It was almost possible for Sugumi to smell the reek of their excitement like the smell of men lusting after flesh. It was a fetid stench, greasy and rotten, greasy and rotten, for it was Sugumi's body that they were after. 
What they wanted was nothing more than to perform human experiments under the pretext of making the ultimate human dream come true. Actually, is it because of Sugumi that they managed to cure the teeth blow? Because it, it's, it, I'm pretty sure that Harukane is Akikane's mother figure that we see, and that she lived through it either because of the cure that was given under the sea or afterwards. But, um... By using Sugumi's body, they were planning to gain knowledge, fame, and fortune. Did they not already do that in the past, though, when she was really young? Uh, that was indeed their desire. We've been waiting for you. One of them took a deep bow. And how did she even start into the game? Like, the Tanuki suit and... Uh, uh, Kinda's veneer of politeness was an evil that threatened to spill forth, making Tsugumi sick to her stomach. Okay. Some of the others in his entourage licked their lips, swallowing their saliva like dogs gone mad with the hunt. That instant, Tsugumi kicked hard off the ground, breaking into a run. She ran across the white surface of the huge artificial island, desperately scaling the high surrounding fence and fled into the nearby foliage. Oh shit. Straight away a runaway. Wow. Okay, but you're still surrounded by water, aren't you? There are canafe of screams and anger, an angry cursing faded behind her. Tsugumi hid and waited until nightfall. She held a single hamster to her chest. Oh! At night, a supply carrying vessel slipped out of the floating island's port. Tsugumi had stowed away on the vessel, hiding herself amongst the cargo she was headed to the mainland. From that moment on, Tsugumi's life was consumed with one thought, how to escape from them. Although she wasn't a criminal, she avoided people, preferring to hide in the darkness, all the while threatened by ominous feelings of being hunted. Ouch. Nothing changed after she safely made it to the land. Well, yeah. Every few weeks, she moved from town to a different town, wandering in the darkness. She slept under bridges, under black street eaves, pipes pouring into the ocean, even in public restrooms. Uh, wouldn't you want private restrooms instead? No, no actually, public would be more private. Meh. It was an endless cycle of running. She never had a second's piece. Okay, really? Not a second's piece? I don't know. I can take things a bit too literally sometimes, but I'm sure she at least had a minute's piece occasionally. She couldn't turn to the police. She had no place to live. Her identity was uncertain, and her age and appearance didn't match. The police would only doubt her. Mm-hmm, I'll believe that. Information regarding Sugumi had spread through the National Police Network. It would only be a matter of time before Liebich would find her. Yeah, and Liebich has friends in high places, I'm guessing. Yep, Liebich's uh, uh, influence even extended to national politics. There was nothing else for Sugumi to do but continue to hide in black alleys. That sucks. She hated Liebich. I hate them too. That's why I call them Liebich. They had destroyed everything Sugumi had cared about. Uh, and made her life a living hell. What's more, to be fair though, before you met Takeshi, which you only met because of the accident, I'm pretty sure. Uh, well actually, no, technically you met him before the accident in the Tanuki suit, I'm pretty sure. But, um, before you met Takeshi, you just wanted to die anyways, right? Why were you even there? Why Why the hand, why, why the suit? I'm, I'm very confused, actually. Can you explain those, those questions, those answers? Meh. They had taken away the love of her life, Takeshi Kurinari. Mm-hmm. You think, but dun-dun-dun, he lived because of the cure virus. Maybe? Maybe. She wanted to get revenge on Liebich with every fiber of her being. To be fair, it was arguably your fault for going back upstairs. To be fair, you didn't know, but to be fair, you shouldn't have went back up. That was stupid of you. Shigumi came to hate this world, and her heart became even more hardened to it. Two months had passed. It was summertime. All of a sudden, she began feeling sick. Okay. She knew she had stopped, uh, monstrating, but she didn't want to think about the possibility. Oh. Oh, menstruating. I read that as monstrating. Well, you know, maybe with her fucked up genes, it could be monstrating. Yeah. So yeah, they just did it on the gondola. Okay. They didn't actually make that clear until just recently, and the first time through, I don't think they made that clear, but... I mean, I thought, I thought that might have been what they were going with, but I was like, no, they'd be more clear. I, I thought so, anyways, but yeah. She went to visit an illegal doctor who was well known in the back streets. Neat. 
Sugumi was pregnant. Sugumi was sure it was Takeshi's baby. She'd never been with anyone else. She was pregnant. At night, she went to the deserted coastal area of a small nearby town. There was nothing but printing factories and abandoned houses. Unsure if it was a river or, or an ocean, she sat in a boat dock looking at a neon sign by the highway. She touched her stomach. She felt a sense of awe and joy at the fact there was life growing in her stomach and that it was connected to her. Neon light glittered and flickered off of the water's surface. Tsugumi looked at the lights, with her hands on her stomach. Realizing that the Takeshi's babies were inside her, she couldn't stop crying. They might have only been only an inch big at the time, but the survival of the two babies outstripped the needs of the mother's body that surrounded them. Tsugumi almost had the illusion that it wasn't her who bore the children, it was actually they who bore her. I can see that. Everything that she was, she poured into her two babies. She felt that she was part of the babies, not the other way around. It was then that Tsugumi decided to sacrifice everything for the two tiny lives. Love was a concept to her, but if love could be brought into physical form to her, it seemed it must be the babies in her stomach. That was it, love was going in her stomach. Takeshi and Tsugumi's babies. Before long, the hatred she had felt towards everything had disappeared without a trace. First time Tsugumi felt as though there were a higher power guiding her life. And that higher power killed Takeshi! Or did they? Seven months later, January 21st, 2018. Tsugumi was suddenly struck with contractions. Okay. When they came, the back alley doctor had gone somewhere. Oh, well, then she had to self, uh... What is it called? Self... Self-receive? Self-give? Self... Well, if you're doing it yourself, you can't really receive it. Ah! She visited a nearby clinic. And this clinic, uh... How is this important? This has to be important for her to use the clinic instead of the illegal doctor. There has to be a reason, right? She had no medical insurance, no identification. Most importantly, she had no money. But she had an in because it was owned by... Yu's mother! I don't know. Random guess. Um, when he found out that she couldn't pay, the doctor beat Tsugumi as though she were a stray animal. Oh. Ow! Oh. Wait, is this after the pregnancy was del after the babies were delivered? Oh. Well, fuck the doctor then. You should have got the money up front. Don't beat them later. With nowhere else to go, the two babies were born in an old boat shack. Ow. No woman was living there, but Tsugumi could not tell whether she lived there or was just sleeping there temporarily. It was this old woman who helped Tsugumi through the birth. Oh, well that's nice. Maybe she's the old nun. Uh, I'm pretty sure Tsugumi's supposed to be the old nun, but meh. And I think Takeshi's finally gonna come back to her. Now? At the end of this, uh, pathway? Maybe. Oh, how precious, so precious, you done a fine job, dearie. The old lady repeated this many times as she gently Rinse the babies in a tin basin. The sweet, the sweat, <laughs> the sweat covered Tsugumi was lying down with only a thin towel between her and a hard wood floor. Tsugumi's eyes gazed unfocused out a nearby window. Snow was falling outside. How oh, darling. Yes, a precious boy, child, and a girl. Which one will you hold first? <laughs> oh, whoever you hold first, the other one's fucked for life. The illegal doctor had told her so she was expecting twins. She never imagined that they would be fraternal. A bit surprised, she said. Both at the same time. Yeah, you can't pick favorites before you even know them. Uh, maybe after you know them, but... <laughs> Wrapped in an old cloth, Sigumi gently held them to her chest. Now, don't worry, my dearie. I boiled the, them cloth and the scissors. What cut their cord in hot water good, I did. Your speech was weird just now. Thank you. Sigumi thanked her. Thank you. Thank you very much. She gave thanks to the two lives who had been born safely. Thank you. And these last words were directed toward the deep darkness beyond the window. The snow was falling. The two babies pressed to Sugumi's chest with eyes closed let out small yawns. The cure virus. Soon after she had given birth, Sugumi's thoughts returned to that possibility. They got infected by cure while they were inside of me. And if their DNA was altered just like me, Sugumi visited the illegal doctor. Don't worry about it, he explained, la he explained laughing. Ha <laughs> ha, don't worry about it. Uh, you can't pass on what your fucked up body has. According to taxonomic classification, a pure human would belong to primates, anthro 
Anthropoidea Hamabapa. But you just made up a bunch of words, didn't you? I don't believe any of this. I don't know. Homo. Gay. They're automatically gay? I don't know. Sugumi, whose DNA and for information was altered by the cure virus, was not a pure human anymore. Rather, a subspecies of it. But she gives birth to pure humans? Let's just call you subspecies cure for now. And that eventually became commonplace, is that it? Now, any kids who were born from Takeshi, the Homo sapiens, had, and Tsugumi, the cure, would technically be hybrids. Now, by the way, I guess I should tell you that the cure virus only infects, uh, pure humans. Well, duh. It can infect them if they're not pure, because... Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. I thought what you were saying is, well, if they already have the cure virus, the cure virus can't infect them. What you're saying is, if they're hybrids, then that means it, they can't be affected by cure because they already have part cure. So they can never have whole cure if they're part cure? I suppose that's what they're saying, so, okay. I get that now. Cool. So there's no way the cure virus possibly affects your two little hybrids there. So if they're already slightly fucked up, they can't be fully fucked up? That seems a bit weird, but I'm willing to buy it, I guess. I'll, I'll suspend my disbelief, but that seems a little weird. While not much is known about the cure virus, some of the unique functions scientists have discovered, such as regenerating telometers and regenerative healing, are inherited recessively. For blood types, without exception, all children born from a type AA father and a type OO mother, for instance, can only be type AO with a type A predisposition. Why? Because type A factors are inherited dominantly. Type O factors are inherited recessively. In order for a child's blood type to be type O, you have to have a mixture of either AO times AO, AO times BO, AO times OO, BO times BO, <laughs> BO, BO times OO, or OO times OO. It can only be one of the above, meaning that both the parents gotta <laughs> add that type O factor to the genetic milkshake. Same goes for the cure virus. So they both need cure to give the child cure, and Takeshi did do that before potentially getting the cure virus. He, he, he did give her the sex before he got, if he got it, it was afterwards. So, they would have no problems. Mm-hmm. But it's still, it begs the question, because doesn't the cure virus eat away at you until all your cells are curish? Curish? Is that a word? I think they explained it something like that, so I'm wondering how it can... I guess it's because it turns them into not completely humans, and so when the cure virus tries to eat the human cells, they're not human cells. They're fucked up cells, but they're not cure cells either. So they can never turn into cure cells because there aren't any human cells to eat? Is that what I'm getting at? I think? I think. So we're not totally normal humans either, but we're not as fucked up as Sugumi. <laughs> no offense, Sugumi. Any child born from a pure blood sapiens and cure will all be sapiens cure and inherit the dominant physical traits of both. For them rugrats to become full blooded cure, the parents have to be cure times cure, sapien cure times cure, or sapien cure times sapien cure. Oh, that's interesting. So you're saying if me and Maya weren't siblings and got giggity, or hell, if we are siblings and get giggity, does that mean our child has a chance of being full cure, I guess? It doesn't necessarily have to happen, but it could? I think is what he's saying? I think. I think? I think. Okay, but that's interesting. Alright. Interesting. I'll take it. Any of those combinations mean that both parents have to be part or all cure. So a part cure can give birth to an all cure, but um, a part cure can never actually turn into an all cure. That's interesting. And since these two little cr critters were born from a pure sapien and a pure cure, They'll have the same physical traits as a pure human, and won't possess the cure traits like perpetual youth. So you don't have no you don't have nothing to worry about. So you have nothing to worry about, alright? Doctor held up the two babies Sigumi had brought and left again. Sigumi didn't know his background. It was probable that he'd been part of Liebich's laboratory staff in the past since he knew so much about the cure virus. But he didn't seem to be one of them. Sigumi figured she could trust him. Among outcasts, there is an unspoken law. You don't go nosing around other people's pasts. Sugumi didn't ask him anything more, and he didn't demand to know any about her either. A year after giving birth, it was winter again. Sugumi had rented a tiny room and lived together with the two babies. Of course, Chami was there as well. Of course. It was a quiet, rustic little coastal town. It wasn't a city or tourist town. No fishing or farming, nothing. Just a dreary port town. During the day, Sugumi worked for next to nothing at, su at a sewing factory. While well, the baby stayed at a daycare center. Huh. 
she could actually afford a daycare center. Funny. Yeah, a rustic little coastal town it would have to be to avoid the law. She spent every day glued to a sewing machine from early morning to 4 p.m., and after that she'd spend time with the babies. Her wages were very low, and of course they were poor. She couldn't even afford disposable diapers. So what did she use? Tsugumi collected small scraps of cloth, leftovers from the factory, and sewed diapers and clothes for the babies. Aww. That's cute. Aww, Tsugumi. Aww, that sucks for you. <laughs> Sorry, Bob! Well, that's what you're gonna be when you're... Not only is she a single mother, it's worse off than a single mother. Because she can't get help from the law at all. She can't get, like, oh, child care, because the law want... Lie bitch has the law in their pocket, and lie bitch want to, wants to experiment, so... It's worse off than a single mother. And she's underage of what she should be. Like, she can't go up and be like, oh, I have all this experience when you're fucking 17. Nobody's gonna believe you. Um, unless you lie and say you're, like, a... Uh, what, what the Highlander syndrome, which is a real thing, but even then, they're gonna want to see proof and records. But you can't prove that because you don't have Highlanders. You have Cure, which uh, anyone in a high position will want to experiment on you. So you can't prove that. So it all comes down to really shitty conditions. Anyways, despite the harsh living conditions, the babies were going healthily. That's good. Their life was a peaceful one, and although they were poor, the poverty didn't threaten them. They were content. The three of them were always smiling. Mama, Mama! Oh, Chemi, Chemi! They were already beginning to talk. The boy had start, started walking a few steps at a time. Uh, the girl was able to stand, barely, as she held on to things. The girl had begun to speak. Oh, Chemi, Chemi! Which was very unusual for a one year old. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Maya was always ahead of her curve. The boy, it seemed, grew faster physically, and the girl grew faster intellectually. Gee, thanks! Tsugumi tenderly watched over their cute gestures. She was filled with happiness. May 7th, 2019. The two babies were 15 months old. Tsugumi had taken them to the beach. The boy ran around the sand, falling and getting back up over and over. The girl was sitting by the water, putting her hands in the waves. She was giggling, saying, Cold! It's so cold! Watching out over the flat surface of the ocean, Tsugumi's thoughts turned to Takeshi. So that... So, oh, that's right, that's what Takeshi said, the awesome speech. So live! As long as you're alive, live! Don't worry, I'm not gonna die! Those were Takeshi's last words to her, and he fucking died. Or did he? This could be relating to the story, uh, Coco's story, 800 year nun or whatever. He, um, she waits and waits and waits, uh, and I like to think, happy ending, he actually eventually shows up. So, maybe he did have to do something to save Coco, but that's a stretch. That's a big stretch, because, I mean, Sagumi, he really cares about, and by this point, I think he would know about the kids if he set up this big fucked up thing. He has to know stuff, so I would think he knows he has kids. Maybe he doesn't. If he doesn't know he has kids, I can maybe buy it. Um, uh, because maybe if he has this mission to save Coco or something that involves not seeing Sagumi, it's a stretch, especially if he knows that he has kids. That's why it's more likely that it's probably a faker, but I could see it being the real Takeshi if he doesn't know he has kids. If he knows he has kids and he still didn't help them at all, I don't know if I can believe that. Um, if he doesn't know, then I can maybe buy it, but... And it depends. He could have been trapped at the bottom of the ocean for years. We don't know. Like, because Cure would constantly... Like, to drown, if I understand drowning correctly, which correct me if I'm wrong, your cells, like, die when you drown, right? But Cure replaces them, so you'd be constantly drowning and never dying, just constantly drowning, I think. I think that's how it works. I could be wrong, but if that is how it works, he'd be in serious pain for who knows how long. So maybe he couldn't get to them for, for years or something. He could have been drowning consistently for years. Like, that's a scary thought. Um, and maybe he eventually got out. I don't know. Part of me thinks he's alive. He might be dead, but part of me thinks he, he's alive. Anyways, I'm not gonna die. Those were Takeshi's last, word, last words to her. It had been two years already. I'm not gonna die. After saying that, he sunk to the bottom of the ocean, protecting the woman he loved, protecting the children right in front of her. You fool, you're a liar, Sigumi whispered to the ocean. At the same time, she still hadn't given up hope. No, he must be alive somewhere. He's a man of his word. Word only means so much when, um, you're not immortal. But he's immortal, I think, just then. 
A wave swallowed the girl who had been playing near the edge of the water. For an adult, it would hardly have reached their shin. For a one-year-old baby, it was as big as a tsunami. The girl disappeared in a splash of water and was sucked up into the ocean like a piece of driftwood by the tide. Tsugumi ran as hard as she could, held back by the resistance of the sand. Before she could get there, something unbelievable happened. The boy, who was only one year and three months old, jumped into the water and saved the girl. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's a premonition of the future. Hardly able to believe what she had seen, Tsugumi rushed toward them. She carried them to dry sand. The girl started crying. The boy, seemingly unaware of what had happened, looked at his sister crying. A few seconds later, he fell over as if all his strength left him. <laughs> yeah, I guess it just happens often for him. That night, both of them came down with a high fever. It was summertime. A year and a half had passed since the birth. All that time in the past year and a half had been filled with happiness. Nothing special had happened. That was why I've been so peaceful. Mm-hmm. Aww. The boy was a wild one, and Tsugumi could hardly take her eyes off him for a second. <laughs> wow, really? He constantly was putting everything, even Chami, in his mouth. Wow, okay! <laughs> Shonen protagonist! Shonen protagonists do tend to eat a lot. <laughs> How would that work? Because Chami's immortal, right? So if he ate Chami, Chami just be stuck uh, blech, just thinking about shit like that. Like, infinite drowning, infinite being, like, digest- uh, blech. Any electric appliance that he touched seemed to break, and he wouldn't stop jamming metal wires into the outlets. <laughs> Fucking kid shonen, you suck. The girl wasn't quite as much of a challenge, since she moved about less. Still, Sugumi had to put up with her stubbornness, of course. She refused to eat things she didn't like. Oh, <laughs> yep, if you don't want it, you shouldn't have it. And when she got in a bad mood, she wouldn't stop fussing. Yeah, that sounds like uh, Mayo. No matter how much Sugumi warned her, she wouldn't stop playing with her brother's hair. Wow. Yep, even back then, it was clear who the superior one was. She would always demand for more chammy, more chammy. Those days were filled with being, uh, buffeted about, buffeted about by her two rambunctious children. No matter how challenging, even those days were filled with happiness. At night, all three of them slept together, cuddled up on thin mattresses. Mama, mama, on a thin mattress? Meh. Chammy, chammy. Talking in their sleep, the two babies uh, sat their mother's church. Church! Looking down at their sweet and innocent gestures, Sugumi felt bliss she had never known. One day, her peaceful world was shattered to bits. It all happened so unexpectedly. Caught up in her life of happiness, Sugumi had forgotten to watch out for them. She didn't know how they found out, but they had somehow gathered information and showed up without warning. It was the seller! Whoever, whoever she was working for in the sewing place. Ratted her out, I bet. Them, the people from Liebich. With no time to collect anything, all Sugumi could bring with her was her two babies and her hamster as she, fret, as she fled. And the babies were scot naked. They ran, but it was obvious to Sugumi that eventually Liebich would hunt them down. As they continued running, Sugumi thought to herself, even if I could keep escaping, would it really be happiness for the two children? They wouldn't be able to go to school. And it would be too hard on them to keep moving from town to town. Besides, if we ever got caught, what would they do to my children? I lie, bitch. It's too dangerous for them to be with me. Yeah, it's gonna be made up her mind. You know, a lot of the time you hear the stories of the parents abandoning their kids, but, uh... It always hurts when you hear that story, when the kids grow up and they're like, They abandoned me, but this is... You know, when you actually hear the story and see it firsthand, I'm like, I... That makes perfect sense. Um, it would hurt, hurt her like hell, but... That's probably the best way, to try to separate herself from the children, leave them at a church or something, and pray lie bitch never figures out that they're weird. She researched an orphanage she could trust and decided to leave them there. The two children were just too young. Even if Sugumi had tried to explain, they couldn't have understood. With no other option, she left the pendant she had kept with her, making a wish as she gave it. I'll come back for you, I'll come back to get you, I promise. And you didn't come back, I had to come back for you, bitch. Being too young to understand the situation, the two children just stared at their mother crying. Weeping bitter tears, Sugumi looked back many times as she walked away. All she had now was Chami. From Sugumi's chest pocket, Chami looked up at her face in puzzlement. Yeah, you can't really leave Chami with them because Chami is also immortal, so that could fuck things up. But even Chami's cute gesture could do little to ease Sugumi's broken heart. She spent many nights in the depth of despair crying her sorrow. A few years later, 
By the time Sugumi went back to the orphanage, the children were already gone. Understandable. From that time on, she had gone through life. No more than an empty husk. Until that day, until that very moment, Sugumi had kept searching for her children. But the world is a big place! Wandering through darkness. And when you can't trust the law, it can be kind of hard to find information about anything. Not even just the law. A lot of, um, illegal stuff will, well, you know, uh, give in to big corpse like, uh, live itch and stuff, so, yeah, it's dangerous. So can we finish telling her story and close your eyes gently? She never once mentioned the name Hokuto or Mayo in the story. Interesting. Maybe those aren't her real names! Because those names weren't the names Sugumi had given them. Oh, really? What are the names then? Well, yeah. Because our real last name would be Kurinari. Or, or, you know, if you, or it could be, um... Damn it. I don't remember Sugumi's last name. Sorry. Uh, whatever that last name happens to be. Komoichi or something? I don't know. Um... But yeah, Mayo at least got a cool ass last name, Matsunaga. I don't know what Hokuto's last name is supposed to be, but yeah. Someone else had named them Hokuto and Zara. 